Okay, so let's have a look at this limit here. We've got the limit, it's n goes to infinity of sine of n. And here we're saying n are integers. So if we didn't have integers, this would actually be slightly easier to deal with. So if you have the limits, x goes to infinity of sine of x. I'll just draw what we could do here. Basically, you could find some nice subsequences along which, first of all, you're always equal to 1. So here, if you say this is xn equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi into n minus 1, for example, then sine of xn would always be equal to 1. You can find a nice subsequence where it's always equal to minus 1. So if I call this maybe xk with a hat, I've got this 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi into m minus 1, uh, k minus 1, sorry, once again. And then you've got sine of xk hat. This is always equal to minus 1. So you've got a subsequence along which you're always equal to 1. You've got one along which you're always equal to minus 1. So actually, this is quite nice and straightforward. There's no way this limit can exist because you're always oscillating between positive and negative 1 and all the values in between as well. And basically, it is going to be a similar picture for sine of n, where you've got integers. But it's not so straightforward to prove that, especially from starting from first sort of principles. So if you're looking at sine of 1, sine of 2, sine of 3, you would get some different points which are all quite spread out, but it wouldn't be super clear exactly how you would turn this into a rigorous proof to show that this limit doesn't exist. Maybe you can find a way to show that you're always near to 1, you're always near to minus 1. Um, so what I'd like to do is go through a method which doesn't use this sort of argument, something which I find a bit simpler using some trig identities, although it is also possible to replicate this kind of thing. So just to note as well, we're using radians here, but actually if we were using degrees, this is an interesting case where if you were using degrees, then the problem would actually be a bit easier to deal with because you could take some sort of subsequence here. This is 90 degrees. Here, this is 270 degrees. And then you would get the same kind of two subsequences as we had before. So you could say this one, xn equals... 90 plus 360 into n minus 1. So this would give you all the points where sine of xn equals 1. And then you could have your other subsequence starting at 270 and then adding multiples of 360 degrees. So this is an interesting quirk that here you're, you've divided by pi basically to convert from radians into degrees. And you'll find that basically whenever you're 90 plus some multiple of 360, or if you're 270 plus some multiple of 360, you can always get 1 and minus 1. So this would be nice, but we're going to be working with radians. So to give an outline of the kind of argument we're going to use, what we're going to do is we're going to look at sine of n, the limit of this, but we're also going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n plus 1, and then also sine of n minus 1. So all of these, when you take limits, these are all exactly the same thing. And then we're also going to make use of some of our properties of sine, so our angle addition formula. So if you have sine of a plus b, this is always equal to sine a cos b. plus sine b cos a. And we'll basically use this with n and 1 to get a different uh, expression for this limit. And then we'll also we'll do something similar, very similar with sine of a minus b. So this is basically the same identity, just with b replaced by minus b. So you get sine of a cos of minus b is the same as cos of b. And then sine of minus b is now negative sine of b. We multiply this by cos of a. So we're going to use these two formulas looking at the limit n goes to infinity of sine of n plus 1 and sine of n minus 1. We'll introduce some cosines 
and we'll get to a contradiction. So first thing we're going to do then is we assume for a contradiction that this limit exists. And this will also tell us that the limit, if we replace n by n plus 1 or minus 1, this will also exist. Okay, so let's, let's make use of these identities here. So we know that this exists, so we also know L equals limit n goes to infinity sine n. And this is just exactly the same thing, this where you've got n plus 1 in place of n here. So let's plug in n and 1 into this expression, we'll see what we get. So you know that sine n plus 1 equals sine n cos 1 plus sine 1 times cos n. What we're going to do now is we can actually show that the limit as n goes to infinity of cos n, this will also exist as a consequence of our assumption. So we can rearrange this. What we'll end up with is sine n plus 1 minus sine n cos 1. This equals sine 1 times cos n, but then divide through by sine 1. So just rearranging here. Nothing too fancy. And then we take the limits of both sides. Limit as n goes to infinity of cos n. This equals this limit. So you've got sine n plus 1. This is going to give us an L. And then here we'll also have sine n times cos 1 will give us an L times cos 1. So that's a bit. There we go. And all divided by sine 1. And just notice here, sine 1, we know that's not equal to 0. You can verify that quite easily. So it's fine that we've divided by that here. So we use some algebra of limits. We can say here then that L minus L times cos 1 over sine of 1 equals this limit. So we've actually shown now that the limit as n goes to infinity of cos n exists. So just write this out, this limit also exists. And assuming that it does exist, it would be equal to this expression here with cos 1 sine 1 and L our limit for sine. So now we're going to consider sine of n minus 1. We're going to use this formula here with a is n, b is 1. We'll get a slightly different expression for cos of n once we rearrange this. So this is equal to sine of n cos 1 minus sine of 1 cos n. Let's rearrange this then. We want to get cos n on its own. So cos n, this is equal to sine n cos 1 minus sine of n minus 1, all divided by sine of 1 once we rearrange that. And we take limits here and we've now shown that given our assumption this limit does exist. So this is fine. So the limit as n goes to infinity cos of n is equal to the limit for all of this fraction here. So sine n cos 1 minus sine of n minus 1 all divided by sine of 1. And just remember, sine of 1 doesn't equal 0, so that's not a problem here. And I hope you can see then, when we take limits, basically this sine of n term here, this is going to give us an L. This is also going to give us an L as n goes to infinity. So this is all going to be equal to using algebra of limits. So L times cos 1 minus L, all divided by sine of 1. 
So the limit then goes to infinity cos n. We've got another expression for this now. And it's equal to all of this. So let's have a look back at our previous expression then. So we've got L minus L times cos 1 divided by sine of 1. And now we've got L times cos 1 minus L divided by sine 1. So you may notice here this is actually equal to the negative of this. So what we can conclude from this then is that actually the limit n goes to infinity of cos n is equal to the negative of itself. Because I call this star and this one is negative of star. And of course this means that the limit as n goes to infinity of cos n has to be equal to zero. And as a consequence of this as well, because we know that this limit is equal to L minus L cos 1 divided by sine 1, let's rearrange this a little bit. So L, if I take out a factor of L here, so you get L into 1 minus cos 1 over sine 1 equals 0. Well, we know that sine 1, this isn't equal to 0, so you get L into 1 minus cos 1. This equals 0. You know that cos 1 doesn't equal 1, so this thing here isn't 0, so you get L equals 0. And if you recall L, this was what we assumed the limit was for sine, so then goes to infinity. So we've got L equals 0, so we can say now the limit for sine and cos, they're both equal and they're both 0. So n goes to infinity. So we're almost ready to get a contradiction out. So of course both of these facts are wrong. Neither of these converge to 0 as n goes to infinity. But the point is to prove that. So we're going to now make use of so sine squared n plus cos squared n, this is always equal to 1. So we'll use this identity now. So if you imagine you start off with sine squared n plus cos squared n equals 1, and then let's take limits on both sides of this equation. So sine squared n, I mean this is going to converge to 0 plus cos squared n, this is also going to converge to 0. But then the limit as n goes to infinity of this constant 1, this is just equal to 1. So using a bit of algebra of limits here, you get 0 squared plus 0 squared equals 1. You get 0 equals 1. And this is, of course, a contradiction. So we've shown then that if you assume the limit as n goes to infinity, sine n exists, then you get a contradiction. You get 0 equals 1. And, of course, you can also come up with a very similar argument to show that the limit for cos n doesn't exist. All we've shown here is that the limit for sine n doesn't exist.